what's going on guys? It's your boy Motivant Dan, and today we're going to be talking about the gravity pillar. The gravity pillar lifts enemies up in the air depending on their weight and drops them. You have to lift 200 enemies to complete the unique upgrades. The level upgrades is to reduce the cooldown. The unique upgrades either deals physical damage or increase lift active duration. Uh, the gravity pillar is one of the ones that you unlock. It's actually the first one that you unlock. and unlocks after, the, after you beat the first map. Um, you know, it's really strong. And I think a lot of people maybe don't use it as much as they probably should. Uh, so a little bit of history with the game itself. The Drastic Steps was on, was a DLC on Stadia. When the game came out on Stadia, it was there. Nine months after it came out on Stadia, they had Drastic Steps. And then three months after that, it was Steam. And then they had the, the two other DLCs, the Ice and the Sand. Drastic Steps became part of the, uh, part of the core game. Uh, so lasers and... Sawblade launchers were were available for purchase. You did you didn't have to get the Drastic Steps DLC for that. Um, whenever it was released on Steam, but before we had lasers, we used Gravity Pillar. Oftentimes, where you would use lasers, and we still do. Uh, gravity Pillars are very strong for a couple of different reasons. If you're going to go for Endless, since they pull enemies up for a duration, um, that duration does not is not uh, affected by the crowd control reduction at all. And the damage on the lasers, it is good at first, but it falls off later on in the game. So when you're trying to deal with sappers, um, gravity pillars are actually a little bit better for that. Uh, so I would I would recommend trying to use gravity pillars if you're running endless and you're having a hard time with sappers. Um, maps like coastal hallways, for example, they're really good on. Even on um, split stairs, stuff like that. If you can have a co-op partner as well. Um, if you both bring lasers for combos and then, you know, one of you brings gravity pillars for the sappers, uh, it could work in your favor pretty, uh, pretty heavily there. That being said, the physical damage per second is, uh, also a good one to run if you're going to go combos, um, just because it does a lot of damage, 16 damage per second, and it's five seconds or seven if you, well, you can't do damage if you get the seven, but it's for five seconds, um, if you get the physical damage upgrade, uh, which is quite a bit. And it's enough to kill sappers good, uh, for a good long while there on Endless just by themselves. And while they're in the air, they're considered launched. And so they're going to take double damage from all the sources as well. Um, meaning if you lift them up and then things hit them from outside the kill box, it's just going to do more damage and then they're going to die faster anyways. So why not? Uh, gravity pillars is a good way to have enemies get like sucked up onto a high ceiling. If you have like a split stairs or a mage tower and then you have some other wall trap, grinder, um, or maybe even a spike wall to like swat them out of there. One of the complaints I have is that a bug that, that used to be in the game is no longer there and it would kind of make it a little bit better. Um, and that is that, again back on Stadia, <laughs> whenever you had a spike wall or a flip trap affect an ogre or another very heavy enemy, if the gravity pillar was also active, what would happen is they would get, they would get lifted up just a little bit. So it'd be enough to like move them over top of a barricade. So you could have a troll and if you have a gravity pillar where the troll is getting flung into, it would actually lift it up just a little bit and then it would drop it. It's very, very gradual. Um, and it, it really just it really just extends the flip trap by like an extra tile, um, which isn't very much. But but it's that subtleness that would actually make it pretty good to run uh, whenever you're going endless and stuff like that because you could take it over a barricade, possibly. Um, so... It was kind of cool to see that. I think what happened was like whenever they got flipped, their um, their hitbox turned into a to like a very heavy enemy hitbox, or their weight was decreased or something like that for like a temporary amount of time, and then the gravity pillar was able to affect them. Uh, again, it wasn't it wasn't a whole lot. Um, like I said, just like a like a tile extra maybe, um, but it was really cool. So I, I kind of wish that was still in the game. You know, it requires other things to happen as well for the ceiling uh, for the gravity pillar to to work in that way and because it was, it's a little bit niche but would be a kind of a cool thing to, to have kept in the game but oh well here we are <laughs> there's another fun bug that happened with the gravity pillar where the sound of the gravity pillar would never stop and every time it activated it would compound upon itself and so you would end up um it, it's like a it's like a ringing noise almost um or maybe like maybe like somewhere between a hum and a ring and you would be anywhere on the map Eventually, you'd be able to hear it, and it would be the only thing you're able to hear. You wouldn't be able to hear anything else. The music, the voice lines, nothing. It would just it would drown out everything. It was so, so bad. <laughs> and I'm glad they fixed that one. That was a pretty fun bug. 
uh, to have to play with, I guess. So, um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the gravity pillar uh, as far as the unique upgrades. Really, it kind of depends on what you want. Typically, I run phys uh, deals physical damage, but if I have plenty of damage otherwise and I need a little bit more crowd control, I might do the increased lift active duration. The gravity pillar is surprisingly decent against flyers, um, but we'll kind of take a look at that whenever we jump to a game and, and look at how you can kind of lay out the gravity pillars to be effective. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the game files. All right, the first thing's first is gravity speed. Doesn't matter. Max trigger volume length. Uh, not exactly sure what it means, but the trigger range is 26.6 squares. You're never gonna, you're never gonna have a ceiling tall enough for the gravity pillar not to work. It's kind of like lasers, basically. In the trap protos here, we can see the trigger delay is 0.1 seconds, which is really good, especially on runners. Um, trigger duration is six seconds by default. Um, the reset delay is the cooldown is 15 seconds. Coin value 700. Um, you do get it after the first map. Okay, the gravity pillar, you get reduced cooldown by one second. You get that once, you get it twice, you get it three times, reducing it uh, to 12 seconds from the 15-second uh, cooldown it is naturally. And then you have a dealing physical damage, 0.75. It, it adds up to 16 damage a second. And then you have the increased lift active duration. You add two to it, so it takes it from five uh or, I'm sorry, from 6 to uh, 8 seconds. Yeah, 6 seconds to 8 seconds. All right, that being said, let's go ahead and jump into a game and take a look at what it looks like. All right, here's Icebound Mine, one of the ones that you might bring the gravity pillar on because there are uh, flyers. Now, I will say that um, if you look at the hitboxes here, you see, like, the blue line. I think it used to be the entire circle of the trap or the entire square of the trap. But it's, I don't know, maybe maybe it's just my memory. Um, but you can see here that these lines, actually there's like an opening right here. So enemies could theoretically like walk in and over and then down, but they don't do that. They walk in a straight line. And so when, the, when you spread them out like this, flyers can fly in between them. But if you have them staggered like so, then flyers will always get picked up no matter what. Um, so they can be pretty decent against flyers. Whenever flyers get snagged up by them, they just kind of stay where they are, and they don't move. So if you have it in front of a high wall like this, you run arrow walls on the wall there, um, then they'll trigger it. And if you have archers in the back, it'll be easier for the archers to hit because they stand still. They don't move, uh, move around at all. Plus, all the small guys on the ground, while the flyers are getting picked up, the small guys will also get picked up. It has no limit to how many enemies it can pick up at once, um, which makes it a really strong crowd control option. Whenever it's finished lifting, of course, it'll drop them all to the ground, and then everything will have to, like, stand back up, and they'll all get, uh, you know, clumped up in an area. Uh, the damage per second is pretty nice um, and can help a lot with the flyers as well if you run damage versus duration. But you might run duration to help your other traps come off cooldown to do all the damage in the area as well. So that's just something to know about it and a particular way to use it. That being said, guys, uh, do let me know what you think in the comments. If you use it, if you don't use it, why, why not? Uh, if you have any tips or tricks... Uh, on using it, go ahead and put it in the comments. If you're looking for those things, check the comments. As always, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. I do stream on Twitch. You can check it out at uh, twitch.tv slash motomandan. Also, if you uh, just want to subscribe, you can hit the notification bell on YouTube, and I will upload a video whenever I'm going live on Twitch. We play a lot of Orcs Must Die 3 and other tower defense games. So do feel free to check it out. That being said, as always, have a good day, and I will catch you on the flip side. Deuces.